Hello, this is HG Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Rhapsody, a musical adventure! With a new enemy here, Fairy! And, let's see, this one can inflict various status ailments on you, but I'm not extraordinarily concerned because, yeah, it doesn't have a whole lot of HP there. But we do get a lot of Enotium from the battle. But yeah, that one is a really rare encounter here. And if you don't get it now, I think you can't get it later. I mean, not right now, but I mean, in the near future. So, just get it while you're there. And, yeah, just heal up after all that. And, let's see. Well, now we gotta cook the fish for the prince there. So, let's go back home. And see how good Cornette is at cooking. Sounds like a plan. She just said we're cooking. But all right. Well, what are you doing around there? Well, I mean, I guess preparing to cook? Okay, so, as we all know in JRPGs, if someone loves cooking, they must therefore be terrible at it. Absolutely! Well, that seems quite elaborate. Well, it's gonna get cold by the time you get it to him. Oh! Hey! <laughs> I like how Cornette is kind of surprised there, like, Really? I, I, I didn't screw it up? Th that's not the JRPG trope. Well, good for you. Well, I, I would think you'd put one foot in front of the other and you move. What path? Oh. Okay. Wait, did she just take the fish with her? Uh, Cornette, you're, you're done cooking. You can stop now. Cornette? Oh, well, okay. I couldn't really tell. Are, are you breaking the fourth wall again? What do you mean? Can I go now? I don't know. What are you doing over there? Well, I guess we did send the fish to its grave. A watery grave. Oh, what's this? A secret passage. Oh, well, of course. Hmm, doesn't really look like much to me, but, uh... Oh, okay. Couldn't we just try going through the front door? You could actually try that. You could leave this place and go there, but you wouldn't be able to get the, get the fish. Yeah, I'm sure it's nothing. Don't worry about that, Cornette. But yeah, the girls that were there at the castle, they would be blocking your path. You wouldn't be able to advance the plot or do anything over there, so... Yeah. Hmm. A locked door! Remember that door for later, viewers. But for now, let's get some treasure. I think that's the only treasure you can get here. I mean, in the underground path, that is. Before fighting a new enemy, let's see. Mini fire. Basically, the same as the other elemental ones that we fought before. And I don't think I even need to target anything. Just auto battle these guys. The game will eventually get remotely difficult, just not in the first few chapters, that's all. But yeah, the game is indeed really easy. We could have met up with those mini fires before in the Cave in the Woods, but they're a pretty rare encounter there. So I figured, yeah, let's wait until here where they're more commonly encountered. What did the switch do? What 
Samantha? Are you ambushing me? Or before she turned on you? For mini boss time! Though these guys, I think, are identical to the random ones you meet up with. But yeah, the guy there, the Bone Boy, is Dark Elemental. You can tell by the little star symbol next to its icon there. And, well, Dark would be weak to Holy. And uh, Shart has that asterisk symbol there. Something like that. To indicate that she's Holy Elemental. So th that's how you tell the difference between elements. What kind of gas? Nice gas? Night night gas. Or not. Oh. Uh, did she what? I don't know. Well, why not? Oh. Well, you're a JRPG protagonist. You can get talked into anything. Evidently. Ah. Oh. Well, how do you know? How did you know that before going through the door? Ah. Oh. Well, we're good now, I guess. Uh-oh. Someone here? Oh. Hey, how's it going? Well, we came to tour the castle. I'm not sure what you guys are worried about. Something. Do something! Do something! Oh, uh... Yeah, I suppose. Oh, we, uh, cooking dinner for the prince there. Could you lead us to him? Well, he might not know the prince. How important could he possibly be? Oh, okay, uh... Minister there. Okay, so that would be up there in the ranks. I don't think he would outrank royalty, but whatever. Why would we get arrested? The Queen said anyone can tour the castle or whatever. Isn't that what one of the NPCs was saying earlier? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Can't you see my face just fine, two feet in front of you? Ah, um, okay. He looks trustworthy. No, of course not! Now you're just talking crazy! What do you mean? Whoa! Calm down there! Oh, great, just throw the fish at him! Oh, not really much of an ambush! boss time against three of the same guys that we just killed a moment ago. I could use Shart's holy magic against these guys, but we really don't need to. And got him! Hooray! How am I an assassin for throwing a fish at you? How would that possibly be remotely lethal? Or harmful, for that matter. I mean, maybe if I poisoned the fish, I guess, but we were kind of using it as a projectile weapon. Whoops, sorry, going through a little quickly there. 
Well, you don't really have much of a choice. What kind of contest? So... What do we do now, then? That didn't work. Oh, really? Well, yeah, if you signed up for the Princess Fan Club in uh, Mother Green there, you'll get a newsletter periodically about what's going on with the prince, I guess. Oh. Oh, really? Hmm. I thought that was just going to be like a... Uh, some kind of a beauty contest or something. Hmm. Well, remember that for later, viewers. Maybe we can find a way to enroll in that contest. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I was kind of there. I wasn't really trying to assassinate him, though. He seems to be, uh, overreacting quite a bit. Well, no one here seems to know. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's not like they have cameras everywhere. <laughs> no, seriously, they don't. Not, like, magic cameras or anything like that. Oh. Oh, uh... Yeah, I suppose. You just called him Minister Galanzo! In the middle of the conversation! Well, yeah, isn't that the end goal here? To get boned by the prince? Yeah, some of the people say some things about either the contest or Galanzo or whatever. Oh. <laughs> I hope that guy's not in the sequel. There is a sequel, but it was only released in Japan. I think it's called Little Princess. But I think it's like a direct sequel to the game. But unfortunately, we never got that game here. I heard there was like a translation being worked on for it. Like a fan translation or whatever. But it kind of hit a dead end like four years ago or something. Oh, really? I would be highly interested in the sequel if someone actually completed a uh, what is it a fan translation of it but uh well so far no dice but maybe it'll be like crystal warriors and royal stone and something and they'll finish the fan translation there well all right so we got a bit more money let's get another cat's paw and let's see ultimately i want to get up to nine cat's paws and then I'll start saving my money for better things. Let's give that one to Cornette so she can help out a bit more there. Everyone's got dual cat's paws now. Okay, so that's everything I want to do here. Let's see how things are transpiring in the PS1 version of the game then. Okay, we're back in the PS1 version of the game at the entrance to the cave in the woods there, and I've already recruited Tal here. Uh, one important difference with him in this version of the game is that he's a long-range physical attacker, but you see his offense stat there? Yeah, it's a lot less than it is with Kid. So I'm going to be using Kid long-term, not Tal. I mean, you might think having a long-range physical attack would be really useful in an RPG with grid-based movement, but, uh, it's not that extraordinary, in my opinion. Now, let's see, I've already cleared out most of the treasure in the dungeon here, except for one that's different from the DS version, which contains a bromide, or illustration, 
basically the same thing as bromide in the DS version, or, or in uh, the Lunar games there. So it's just like some hand-drawn artwork or concept art or whatever it is, I don't know, but... Well, there it is. I will be collecting all of them and showing them off as I go through the game. But alright, that's all of our business here. I'm going to meet you back at Orange Village after buying a cat's paw or two, depending on how much money I get on the way back. Okay, we're back home here, and I bought two cat's paws with the money I had. So, I gave them both to Cornette because she can't boost her own attack power with the horn command, whereas the puppets can receive that. And let's see, I also got a teleporter because I'm going to be heading to the Ancient Forest. Now, normally I wouldn't go through an entire dungeon all over again, especially since I've already done that in the DS version, but for whatever reason, they greatly changed the layout of the Ancient Forest in the DS version. So like on this path, you see we got the same treasure, but I think they put like an extra room there or something for some reason. Or well, they took away one of the rooms in the DS version. And that's how most of the changes are to this dungeon. I think there's only a couple dungeons where they change the layout like this. So I won't go through every single dungeon in the game twice. But in this case, I think it's important. Let's see, the path to the right was where we got that treasure before. But in the PS1 version of the game, you gotta take the upper path to get to this treasure. Yeah, it seems really oddly specific that they would change, like, this dungeon, which really has no storyline significance. Just some good treasure for us to find. But yeah, like, almost every other dungeon in the game is the same between the two versions. I mean, it's not like there's a memory capacity issue or number of rooms you can have on a single floor. There are plenty of dungeons that have a lot more rooms than the Ancient Forest does. Maybe they were just thinking about making the change for all the dungeons, and then they were like, nah, let's not do it. We'll keep what we got, but... Now, let's just leave the rest alone. Okay, let's see. Okay, well, uh, we got uh, the bees there. And one thing about these guys compared to the DS version is that they have a movement range of four, unlike almost everything else in the game that has a range of three. I guess because they can fly around, they just give them more of a range. But you can't move, like, through an enemy unit or anything like that. So it's not like, say, Final Fantasy Tactics or Gungnir, where if you could fly, you would be able to go over enemy units. But in this case, no, not so much. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go right there. Actually, I can show something off here. If you, in the PS1 version of the game, if you don't move or take any other action here, and you just go straight to end, you'll defend there from enemies there, which would reduce your damage a bit. So, that's pretty nice. Let's see, one other thing I wanted to mention are obstacles on the battlefield. Like here, we got that rock there, and if the bee was still over here, I wouldn't be able to hit it with one of my spells there from Shark. So, just something to keep in mind there. But alright, got him. Gained some levels. Awesome. Let's keep on going then. Okay, so we're back at the teleporter room. Okay, I'm gonna go for the treasures in a little bit of a different order than I did in the DS version of the game. And the reason is because, well, I don't have to look out for rare enemies at the bottom of the dungeon. 
in this version. There is no, like, bestiary collection or anything like that. Just the bromides that we got here. So let's see what we got there. So yeah, the idea with the way I routed the dungeon in the DS version was to grab all the treasures finishing on the lowest floor. So that way I would... Uh, what was it? Uh, so that way I would be in the area where the rare enemies are already by the time I was done. But in this case, since I don't have to worry about it, it's just a little faster to do it this way instead. Okay, I think the remaining treasures are in roughly the same locations as before. It just takes you a little longer to get to them. They put like an extra room along the path or make you go in a different direction for some reason. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, just go up here and then I think this one might be in a different direction. I forget exactly. Well, at least I know where they all are. Now, let's see. See, in my inventory here, let's see, we got healing candy, meta candy, healing ball. At the top there, you open this chest. What's an energy guide? How does it even work? Well, actually, that's just a, a typo or translation or whatever it is. You see, we now we got energy candy in our inventory, but I guess it fixed that uh, text box or whatever in the DS version of the game. But alright, we are done here, and let's see, I'll probably buy, yeah, three cat's paws, distribute them evenly with my party members, and I will meet you back at, uh, well, actually, not even in uh, Orange Village. Uh, I need to, uh, well, first we gotta get the Bobo fish, so I'll just uh, meet you back just outside Natalie River there. Okay, well here's an enemy that I wasn't expecting to encounter on the way into... Uh, what is it? Into the Wonderwoods to get the Natalie River there. Uh, Inotium lizards here, and let's see. Okay, so let's go. Yeah, we'll just go use the horn to buff up there, and let them go to town. Just auto attack there with the circle button. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at how much I'm not, or how much I am remembering the different button configurations between the two versions. But yeah, as you can see, these guys give you a lot more in OTM than they did in the DS version, which would make sense, because, well, they're, they're in OTM lizards. And here we gained a skill level. And uh, basically the way that works is once you've gotten at least 10 kills, you get up to skill level two there. And yeah, so Kid also did that. I think it affects your crit rate, but I personally don't notice a difference. But I just like to distribute my kills evenly anyway. Wow, I got into another random battle that quickly? Huh. But alright, another reason why you want to give kills to Cornette, not just to boost her skill level, but also to make it easier to recruit monsters because she'll be able to deal sufficient damage to kill them with her basic physical attack there. That is, if you want to recruit monsters. But even if you're not going to do that, it's still a good idea to give kills to her, so that way... You might randomly recruit a monster, even if you don't plan on using it, so that way you could sell it for money, and that could help out a bit too. But alright, we're back at uh, Natalie River here. We've got to get the, uh, what is it, the Bobos for the prince there. For boss time against the Bobos. Okay, let's see what we got here. You know what, I'm just going to go with a physical attack. Hmm. How much? Each? No. I was, I'm surprised. I thought the, uh, 
would go down real easy in this version of the game, but no. Well, kid can't get any damage there. Unfortunately, the horn command only lasts for the duration of the next turn of your puppets. So, kid doesn't have that buff anymore, unfortunately. Let's see, can I kill any of them? Yes, I can. If I don't miss, that is. Uh, by the way, though, the equivalent above horn uh, spell in the DS version of the game, that lasts for the current round and the next round of combat. So, and there's another horn spell that we get later in the game that also has a oddly specific duration there. But all right, okay, we got the Bobos there, and the cats are gonna show up. I'm just gonna skim through this because it's the same dialogue. And let's see, well, unlike the DS version of the game, this time we actually do have to fight a lot more cats. I guess maybe in the DS version they couldn't do more than four enemies at a time for some reason. Okay, so, now that we are here, let's see what we got. Let's go... Let's see, sugar candy? No, that won't be enough. Plan? No. Uh, by the way, higher or stronger attacks here, you consume more levels of the appreciation gauge, but some of them also have wider areas of effect there. Hmm. I'm wondering if I really should do that. <laughs> No, I don't think so. It's not worth it. These guys are one-shottable without using Cornette's Horn Command. So, yeah, we'll just go like that, although I can't get in range. Not even in range to use a spell on those guys. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Shark's Saint spell has a range of two. Yeah, it's not like Diz Gaia where you can nuke enemies from the other side of the battlefield. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay, I'm... Oh, wait, hold on. Um... I was thinking about physically attacking that one, but I think I'm just gonna get in range and... just hit that guy with magic there. Because I'm not sure that that enemy would have gotten its turn after Kid and thus leave him in range of being able to kill the guy. But all right, so we took care of the cats there. Let's get back home, cook up some fish, and I'll meet you at the penultimate screen in the underground path there. Actually, I lied. Uh, before going into the underground path, I just want to show off a little difference in this scene here in the PS1 version. Yeah, for some reason, they just have her humming a song in this version of the game. But, uh, yeah, they didn't have that in the DS version for some reason. They do that a couple times where they insert lines that, like, weren't in there originally or, like, little tunes or things like that. So, but, uh, well. Adds a little charm to the scene, I guess. But, uh, okay, yeah, so we're done here. Now I'll meet you back down in the, what is it, the underground path there at the end. Okay, we're back at the end of the underground path here. And let's see, so, yeah, I've got enough cat's paws for everyone there, except for Kid. But I gave the fighter's charm to him, even though he has the most HP, because... He can only damage enemies or do anything useful when he's in melee range. Whereas Cornette could buff, or Shart could cast a spell, or whatever. So, alright! 
Uh, let's see. The enemies that we fight here are, are the same as in the DS version. They're just... Uh, what's it? Well, we got grid-based movement and the horn command and all that going on. For boss time! Let's see. I'm not extraordinarily worried about the jelly bombs. Yeah, let's just buff up here. I couldn't even get in melee range with her anyway. I don't know how she's using her trumpet as a weapon. Or a horn, or... I think technically it's actually just a cornet type of horn. But, uh, okay, so let's see. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that a musical instrument was used as... Uh, melee weapon in my LPs. I hope you like the strategy you're seeing me use in these battles, viewers, because that's pretty much all there is to the strategy in the PS1 version of the game. The DS version eventually gets more interesting, in my opinion, but the PS1 version... I mean, this is pretty much what you got, short of, like, doing a no-puppet run of the game. But I don't feel like spending hours trying to recruit various monsters that would be remotely useful. Now, one thing, uh, also, that I wanted to mention here is that in this room, in both versions of the game, there's a treasure that you can get in there. But because of the scene and the dialogue and everything that's going on here, we can't collect that here. But if you do go back through the underground path again and come here, you can collect that treasure. But if you wait until later in the game when you would be able to access this room normally, for some reason, the treasure is gone. And it's nothing critical. I mean, it's just... I think, like, a healing item or something. It's, I mean, it's, it seems really oddly specific that you would not, or that the game would remove the treasure from the room for some reason. So, yeah, I actually did check that out. If you do get the treasure, well, if you don't get the treasure and you try to come here later, you won't be able to get it for some reason. And I think it's like the only treasure in the game that's like that. But alright. Okay, so yeah, we throw a fish at the minister there to initiate more boss time. Okay, let's see. They are not in range, so let's horn up. And let's see. Do I have holy yet? No, I don't. Not in this version. Okay, let's see. You know, I think I'll just stand pat here and kind of defend, but these guys, they can't hit me from where they were anyway. Okay, let's try that one again, pal. Build up my uh, appreciation gauge a bit there. And let's see. Yeah, there's nothing extraordinarily difficult about these guys in any version of the game. Although one of their cousins later on can actually be quite a bit deadly if you're not prepared for it. But will Cornette be able to get into the Miss Marl contest at Mother Green? Find out next time on Let's Play Rhapsody, a musical adventure. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!